Oh hi! Welcome to another edition of Hand Laid Tracks and 3D Printed Trains with Socrates. Today we're taking a look at a home design I made, a 12 inch curve with a tangent path. It's a turnout that looks similar to a normal number 4 or number 6 turnout, but what I had was a 12 inch curve in the back corner of my little tiny layout and there was no way to make a normal turn out there but I wanted to have a small spur for a little industrial because I'm putting industrials in every corner I can it's just a two foot by four foot layout or about hundred about sixty by hundred twenty centimeters and uh, I'm just trying to use the space and since I'm building the turnouts myself I'm trying to put them everywhere so what I needed was a 12 inch curve with a tangent they don't exist so I designed one this is a video about the first version of it. Uh, it ended up not working out. Uh, I'm not going to end up using this turnout. The connection here at the throw bar doesn't really work out the way I'd like it to, even though the geometry is right. I had to move the throw bar slightly to the right and ended up making a second version of it, which is just slightly shorter. And that is going to work fine, and I'll be putting this one on the track. But this is a video about design steps and uh, make a whole bunch of small mistakes during this turnout which works out well because I'm not going to end up using it but here's a video of the build out of the turnout and uh, like I say it's just basically a uh, 12 inch curve you can see that this here is a 12 inch curve it sort of stops here but it's a consistent curve coming off the turnout and a tangent and it, it should work fine you can see where the, the geometry doesn't really lend itself as well on the straight path it, so when I move this over here, this connection worked out a bit better. But that's the thrill of design, and with uh, this being in a SketchUp file, I was able to just simply move that over. Pretty minimal adjustment. But here's a video of me putting it together. Uh, eventually I'll put the uh, STLs up on Thingiverse for the second version, but I'm still kind of working on that. So take a look at it, and hope you liked it. See you again next time. So we started on Zoom with the tools. And basically this is a, a slightly different turnout than normal because it's a constant curve but it also has a sort of straight end on it and so one of the two stock rails has to or at least was easier if it contained that into the curve so basically I wanted to bend the rail only but so far so the one had to be straight to that point and then I had a couple curved rails already which I chopped up for the diverging and otherwise the other path for the 12 inch. Because basically when you're doing this you've got the two stock rails, two diverging rails, and two frog rails, and a couple guard rails. And basically one half will be one kind of rail and the other half will be the other kind of rail. If this is a straight and a curved, one half will be all straight tracks, the other half will be all curved tracks. Here are the straight pieces, the uh, stock rail on the outside and the frog and the diverging. And all six of these rails have to have a small piece chopped off of one end of them. And so I take the Sharpie and I mark the little bit for the two frog ends so I know which way I'm cutting them, a little bit on each of the two diverging ends, it's a longer piece, and specifically where on the stock rail the notch has to be cut out. And I use my own frog end point cutting jig that I made, and that's on Thingiverse. Uh, it's easier, I find. It's harder to set it up, but once it's set up, it's easier because you do the two of them together. And if you're actually using this thing, I noticed that you should probably push the rail on the thinner side of the two halves, which I guess I would call the top. I would push that out like an extra two millimeters or so. I'm finding that they don't really cut perfectly even, but if the one's just a little farther, it cuts better. So in the end, I still prefer to have using the metal because with the plastic block, you can feel much easier when you've gone too far. You know, with the metal block, it's kind of hard to tell how far you're going and I always ended up making it that they tip too small I had to do a lot more readjustment I find this work a little better in the end but like I say it can take a little while to set up and this was a brand new block which also makes it a little bit harder to do but pretty quickly you end up with your ends cut off and then I still use the fast tracks uh, point cutter or I'm not sure what you call it stock rail cutter to cut the, the edge of the stock rails uh, after that it's time to start the first soldering. In this case, this is the first mistake I made on this particular turnout because I did a regular number four frog using the, the Fast Tracks number four turnout as my frog maker. And uh, 
this turnout's not exactly number four and so you can see right off the bat I sort of have to force it in there and try to recurve it and get it to go in and that was the first mistake I made on this turnout there's at least I think five I didn't really count them but I made a whole bunch of mistakes so in the end it's a, it's good I'm not going to use the turnout and here's my favorite thing I designed so far for the uh, making tracks which is the tie cutter and gapper because the first time I did this I might have done it a couple times without making my own tool this is a miserable task to do by hand but with a tie cutter you basically cut off your tie your PC tie boards and uh, I'm using the fast tracks PC ties they come in these little metal strips and you nip them off and then I quickly file the one end off so that both ends are nice and clean you slip it in the nipper uh, you cut it off flip it over cut it again both to length now you have two of them that are roughly to length you fill the thing up it takes a few minutes put that whole thing with the file and file them all nice and clean at once which is really quick because they file really fast clean it off with a metal brush and then transfer them from the cutting jig into the uh, filing jig I guess you could call it I don't know and that's when you put the, the gapping jig that's when you put the actual gap into it and then real quickly you just do that I like the way that sounds on the uh, time lapse and uh, just like that you've got a whole set of gaps on the one half and then move the diverging rails this is one of the reasons, main reasons I did it because the diverging path is so hard to get in the right place so move the four diverging ties into the second jig snap it into the outer cover and then <laughs> I love that sound and then you zap out the, the gaps and just like that you've got all your ties are gapped and that one very difficult diverging rail has all three of the gaps cut into it and the middle gap is in the right place and then you can do a quick file of the face and slide them into the jig one at a time again another small time consuming task but it's kind of satisfying when all the jigs all the gaps are in the right place and everything's looking like it's setting up nice and in the end a long setup leads to a pretty quick and easy assembly and then you have a nice finished product because if you do a down and dirty you know setup you'll end up with a difficult assembly and a dirty product so in the end I don't really mind it and again another mistake is not really specifically being done at the moment but the tie bars are just too far to the left for the geometry it just doesn't line up as well and I use my little snap clamps it holds everything in place I still find this to be a very effective system at this point I still haven't finished the second task on the diverging rail it has to be cut to length and has to have a little nip taken out of it and then bent so it goes around the frog and acts as the inside guardrail basically and then you have to nip off just the outer edge of that to make it nice and round and this again is another one of those tasks that you can do quicker you can do really well and I try to do it as slow as I can because I want to make sure I do it as properly as possible and uh, once these are all snipped into place you know I'll start to check it with the uh, small coupling I have a single coupler that I make sure rolls over it but because this is my own design you know it's not like it's necessarily right <laughs> and it turns out I made changes on it but there's no guarantee where the right position is I just sort of you know eyeballed it and designed it and like I said this is the first version of it so the fact that it works at all this well is pretty impressive that it's you know it's come together that it made it a, an actual working piece of track essentially so I'm kinda pleased with the whole process of of designing it the the tracks themselves I mean I'm basically basing it off of fast tracks but it's it's a train track there's only so much you can do with it you need to put basically five ties around the frog two on one side, two on the other, and one towards the middle because that's where you're going to make the isolation cuts through the rails eventually so there has to be a support on both sides so you can cut down the middle of it so those five ties are basically guaranteed the three ties around the throw bar again guaranteed you have one support on both sides and the other one moves so there's no way not to do that and throwing one support in between the two of them makes sense the two sets and then you throw a support on the outside also it makes sense so when you're building a turnout one way or the other it's going to end up looking pretty much the same uh, the, the, the geometry forces your hand when you're doing it and now I've moved into the either fun or not fun depending on how you look at it point of 
soldering these things hold together. And it, because the ties slide back and forth, before I start soldering, I make sure I push them all into the far corner because the jigs have a, a rectangle corner and a rounded corner. And so you want to make sure they're all pushed into the squared out corner uh, in part because that way they're all in the same place and when you take it out you need that little hole to get a little bit of leverage under it with the screwdriver. I use a, I think it's a two millimeter flat edge screwdriver which I sort of force under it. And if you do a quick job with the solder, removing it's not nearly as troublesome. Uh, if you do a really bad job with the solder you're going to have to start chopping away in some places and I believe on this one I ended up melting it. Uh, one of the multiple, mis multiple mistakes I've made but you also want to make absolutely sure that that third gap is in the right place before you put the solder in. But by doing the one side, um, when I push, I first put the solder on the rounded side because that pushes the tie towards the other corner. Because if you start on the squared corner, when you put the soldering iron, you can push the tie away. This way you're basically pushing it into a, a corner where it has nowhere to go. I do the one side of the stock rail, flip it on the other side, do the other side of the stock rail, then install loosely the two diverging and frog rails and check it real quick with the train to make sure that it looks like it's okay and then I usually just put a single piece on the guard rail on the uh, diverging rail and if it seems like it's okay then I'll either go ahead and do the single rail or at this point I'm doing I think a single piece on both diverging rails now at this point I've got everything except for the frog is essentially soldered in and now trying to make sure it works and again you can see I had to readjust the frog slightly and then once it looks like everything's good I went through and put in the diverging rail and here's when I made another mistake because I was eventually getting lazy and decided I could just simply come from the other side and then I put solder onto the rail which is kind of annoying so I continued on and finished the diverging rail and then go ahead and pull it out and clean this up and you can see this is a a quick example of how you take it out that it does come in and out relatively easily again I didn't do that bad a job of uh, soldering up to this point but once I get the other diverging rail fully soldered so everything's nice and strong I made another mistake I had to make that mark because the cut was a little bit too close to the guardrail so the solder went into the gap and so now there'd be a a dead short unless I fixed it so I have two things to fix here here I'm cleaning off the solder from the rail making sure it looks nice and clean and then the problem is I have a dead short in the in the piece now but I decided to wait until after I finished the assembly to fix that because at this point it's really not that strong so I'm making sure that the frog is in the right place with the little train piece and sometimes these clamps break so I just get another one because there's a fine line between being strong enough to survive and being weak enough to bend so they last for a while once the frogs seem to be in the right place checking again with the little the couple coupler I uh, went ahead and tacked the frog down one more time making sure everything seems right because this is a last chance to fix it and I thought it was pretty good so last set of soldering joints and at this point the structure will essentially be done and had I not messed it up <laughs> I would have been moving forward but as is I'm going to have to do a quick repair I have to still gap that missed gap and so we'll see here I think there's one or two more joints to go or one or two more pieces I added these last ties the fast tracks doesn't have them set this way up uh, there's only a single solder joint that holds the frog rail after you've cut it and so I add one tie so at least every rail has two solder joints holding it down and uh, that's right I went all the way through and I added the guard rails well I can't add bar both guard rails I could only add the one because I still have to put the gap on the other guard rail but I wanted to make it as structural as possible before pulling it out because it's not easy on the thing to come in and out and this way I could finish everything I could finish it would be as well put together as possible and then I could leverage it out gap it because I 
can't really gap it with the other guardrail in position. So once this guardrail is in, the slightly annoyed builder decides, well, let's get out the tool. And you can see, you kind of go from piece to piece. Don't do it all at once. Just a little here, a little there, a little there. And then eventually, you sort of jam the thing all the way under it. And you can see it didn't want to come up. And there was a couple places that were a little bit melted. So I went ahead and chopped that out. And I think there was one in the middle there. This is the one that was holding it back. Cut a little bit of the plastic out and then pop, comes right out. Sometimes when it's, if it feels like it's rocky, I'll take on the edge of the table and just sort of push it down and sort of, you know, make it flat again. Because you can bend the thing if you have to. You don't want to be brutal to it. But then with the small triangle file, I manually gapped, which is so much less enjoyable to do. I manually gapped my new gap where I had soldered over the, the original gap. And I had to adjust the tie gapping tool. That's one of the reasons that this isn't getting put out yet. I have to, I have adjusted it, but it's a lot of work on all the individual designs. So at that point, all I had to do was add the other guardrail, and I just slightly put it into the jig. I didn't need, see the need to put it crazily in the jig because it was just the guardrail, which is essentially essentially a simple simple addition. And at that point, the the jig is a, the process is essentially done. Um, it should <laughs> work cleanly there because you've got all the guardrails which makes even a bad frog work fairly well there's a little bit of soldering this is another mistake I noticed that my tie bed that I printed doesn't have that extra gap into it so I had to print a new tie bed or design again to make a small adjustment to the design and the last thing was adding the, the, the throw bar which because I taken it out I didn't have the throw bar at least partially installed because you usually do one of the two sides and then this becomes a exercise in frustration and patience because I could not get this throw bar in properly and again I made mistakes you can actually see the gap is not there and I did not put the gap in the right place and it went in pretty well and then I noticed the gap wasn't in the right place and I said ah ah gap and I had to knock it off with the soldering iron and do it again. And uh, I then it be became harder and harder to get it in the right place. And eventually I had to make a jig, which I think I have here somewhere. Well, had to make a jig, just a simple small piece that held just the three ties together that allowed me to snap it on and uh, put the tie in the right place, the throw bar in the right place. Uh, in the end I got the throw bar in the right place but as I said the geometry of the turnout doesn't work as well as it should have so I had to move the throw bar over slightly and with the new one and this one's ready to go in the track that's why I have the wires into it etc just slightly closer and this throw bar works much much better So you can see it's nice and clean on both sides. That's the main goal when you're making a turnout. Nice and round, it comes around the curves nice and clean. Uh, do a little clean up on these edges as well so your turn is nice and, and works out as well as you'd like it to be. And as long as the trains go over it clean, that's all that matters. And I think the geometry works out fine this time. So that's the first version of the 12 inch curve. And the second version will come out shortly. I'm going to make another video for that, or at least I have. And uh, thanks for watching it. Check it out soon. And the track's coming together. Time to eat some lunch. See you soon.